welcome back. Let's talk about linear and nonlinear models. We've learned that time series add complexity of order or temporal dependence between observations. And this often requires specialized data handling. Traditionally, time series forecasting use linear methods like ARIMA, but those methods have several limitations. They focus on complete data and generally do not support missing or corrupt values. They focus on linear relationship, which means they exclude more complex joint distribution. These models focus on fixed temporal dependence. So the lag of observations, the number of lag observations, must be specified. They use univariate data, but many real-world problems have multiple input variables. And they focus on one-step forecast often, but many real-world problems require forecast with a long time horizon. Neural networks are valuable for time series for a number of reasons. A simple neural network, such as multilayer perceptrons, approximate a mapping factor function from input variables to our output variables. They're generally robust to noise. That means they support learning with missing values. There's no need for stationary series. And also they support and learn not only linear, but non-linear relationship. In addition, there is no strong assumption about underlying data. More specifically, neural networks can support an arbitrary number of input features, and they support multi-step forecasting, where arbitrary number of output values can be specified. So multilayer perceptrons can operate directly on raw observations. The more complex models, like convolutional neural network, is more efficient in terms of automatization for learning to identify and extract useful features. Long short-term memory network also support efficient learning of temporal dependencies and will dedicate time to learn LSTM and recurrent neural network in the following weeks. In addition, we can combine all these capabilities and have a hybrid models. And those models will be more efficient because they combine different architectures. All right, but this week let's focus on multilayer perceptron. MLP architecture has input layer, this is vector of our features, a hidden layer, and output layer, which depends on the task, whether it's regression or classification. And of course, there's a challenge for applying MLP for time series and neural network in general, as we must flatten our lag values into feature vectors for input. So if you take a univariate series and we apply a specific time step model, so we need to convert our series into input features and output features. This is an example of three step sample with one step prediction. All right, in your notebook, you see example how to specify the number of steps, arbitrary. In this case, we chose three as our number of steps, and we have to split our sequence. So from just an array of univariate series, we have to obtain this sample of three steps with one step output. All right, and this time we have six samples with three columns each and output for Y. Recall that X is typically used to represent features and small Y is used to represent output. All right, let's look at our MLP model. So we have to build a sequential model and we'll be using 
a Python library cares that can be installed with pip. In our sequential model, we're adding a dense layer with 100 elements output. This is going to be our hidden layer with activation function relu is a common nonlinear activation function and our input dimension is number of steps that we arbitrarily define. In this case we define it as a three. We add also we add another dense layer with output one as we interested in um, prediction with one value, right? Finally, we compile our model using a specific optimizer. There are several optimizers. In this case, it's Adam, and we're using mean squared error loss function. We can also print model summary. So we have two dense layers, right? And uh, we see the shape of our layer that was specified. And then finally, we can fit our model to our features and output and specify number of iterations. So to predict model, now that we trained it, we need to specify input, but we need to put the input into shape that our model will accept, which is two dimensional, where we have sample and features. So if our input is three elements, let's say 70, 80, 90, and we would like to predict, forecast what's the next value is, and we hope to obtain 100, All right? So we need to reshape it into two-dimensional matrix, where we have uh, first dimension is one, and second dimension is number of steps, which is three, all right? Then we can apply predict function to our input, and we can print our predicted value, which is, in this case, 101, 101, which is pretty close. And of course, your number might be slightly different. When we work with multivariate series, it's slightly, it requires a little bit more preparation. So we can have multiple input series or multiple parallel series. Let's look at the case of multiple input series. So we have sequence one and sequence two. And the third component is addition of this two input series. If we take three step, a three time step model, so I, our input will look like this. So we have three steps, one, two, three steps. Our output actually will be 65, as this is output followed by these three steps. The shape of our sample is three-dimensional matrix. Let's look at the code, which might be slightly um, better to um, see the shape. So we have seven based on our sequence data, right? Based on our sequence data, we have X feature shape as seven, three, two. So we have seven, first dimension seven, right? Second dimension is three. It's actually number of our steps. This is three, this is three, etc. And the third dimension, two, it's number of our features, which is equal to columns, basically, in our parallel series. And finally, we have output, which is one dimensional. It's just a one step output. We can fit the same model. We don't need to change any parameters. What differs in this case is our input structure. We have to flatten our input, which now is represented as array. So you can follow this example where we um, multiply the shape 
3 multiply by 2 gives us 6. And when we reshape our x, our features, with 7, which is our initial shape, and now adding this new calculated and input, which is 6. So the shape of our new data structure will be 7 by 6. So we have 7 samples with 6, basically 6 rows. So this is going to be our input for model. You can apply the same MLP model now to a variety of input in time series. Multiple parallel input, multi-step output, etc. I highly recommend you to um, work through chapter 7 and see how data can be, how input data can be wrangled in order to uh, fit model and how input for prediction also had to be flattened. All right, that's it for MLP model for this week. Next time, we'll talk in more details about LSTM, CNN, and hybrid models for time series. See you soon.